Hey everybody, this is Hogan with Loon Outdoors. And today we're gonna to be tying a pretty simple spring caddis pattern. This is a pattern I call Hogan's Spring Fling Pupa. And I came up with this a number of years ago to fish early caddis hatches in Northern California on the lower Yuba and the lower Sac. Uh, a lot of people refer to them as Brachiocentris caddis, but for me, they're small, they're dark, kind of olivey black, and they start coming off when we have those really kind of pseudo spring days in February. I needed something when I came up with the fly that imitated this in a pretty simple manner. And there's a lot of great patterns out there that uh, fish this hatch. A zug bug works great, an amber wing prince. Tim Fox has a version of the, the famous fox caddis pupa that fishes for this. But this is mine, and I, I, I needed something that I could swing, do a lot of swing during caddis hatches on the lower Yuba, or something I could fish under an indicator. Over the years, I've adapted it to more of a jig style like this fly you see in front of you. But I do still tie this on a straight shank or even an upturned shank for swinging. So the basic hook that I'm going to show you that I use for most of these is a fire hole 516 size 12 with a 764 tungsten slotted bead. There's a lot of different hooks you could tie this fly on. You could tie it on 3769 16s. You could tie it on any sort of straight eyed jig hook like a 2488. There's a lot of different things. The thing is that these are smaller caddis pupa. And I'm tying this on a 12, but I usually, most of the time, will tie it on a 16 or a 14. So to start out, I'm going to use ADOT black thread. I'm going to start that thread wrap right behind the eye. And with a lot of my flies, I, I tend to try to keep them as trim as possible, minimizing thread wraps up and down the shank. And so this first wrap or pass down the shank, I'm going to take a piece of small chartreuse wire and tack it right to the side of the hook shank, making sure to stack those thread wraps right next to each other as I make my way back. Right about before we see that bend. Next I'm going to take a piece of black crystal flash I'm going to use this as just a real subtle kind of rib or flash. This is something I started doing a few years ago, but anything to give it just a little subtle bit of flash in that really dark body. And again, I just tack that piece of crystal flash right on top of the hook shank, stacking those thread wraps down. Take that and palmer it around like you would a piece of wire or anything with about that normal kind of comfort spacing. And wrap that and it's hard to see on camera but this crystal flash it is black and it, it picks up just the subtlest little refraction of light you can kind of see as I twist it and spin it. Then I'm going to take that wire and rib it, try my best to make it go between those wraps, but as I say, no one's perfect. Just tie it off, not going to go all the way up because I am going to leave some room. Because I do need to kind of put in that soft tackle and head and all that type of stuff. So I'll trim that wire. Then, this is kind of an extra step, but I think it's one that's important, um, one that I've really started doing. I'm going to take some UV clear fly finish. I'm going to put it right on my bodkin. And I just take that, just put a light, light coat over that body that I just made. It's almost just enough to fill in the gaps between that wire. And 
hit it with the light. A little chunk there, clean it up. I'm good to go. Just subtle, you know, and it's, it's, I don't know if it's one of those things that really makes the fly work better, but uh, in my mind it works better, and that's, uh, as G.I. Joe used to say, half the battle. So, uh, take a starling skin, okay? Okay, you're gonna need this for your soft tackle. But before that, I'm gonna take a piece of ice dub, peacock black. Okay, any really peacocky, flashy dubbing, but I'm a fan of ice dub. And twist just a little bit. And wrap a, right behind there. Take a, one of the edge feathers. Okay. These little white tip ones. These are great for smaller soft tackles. And again, hard to see on camera, but these starling feathers have a natural kind of iridescence to it. Very similar to peacock curl. And you kind of see how these shake. Got a little flash to it. So I'm going to take about, let's say, the back fuzz off to about like that. Then you can tell there's a natural curvature to the feather. So I'm going to take that, be conscious of that as I tie it in. I'm going to tie in right at the tip. Okay, and you can trim the little tip off. Then as you can see, take that natural curve and use it to palmer around. And these are delicate feathers. Be very <laughs> delicate. I've broken off plenty of these. Take all those fibers, pin them back. And get that nice little soft tackle. Then I'm going to take one strand peacock curl. Tie it in right at the tip. Trim it off. Then give it a nice palmered peacock curl head. Tie it off. Smash all that thread in there. There we go. And trim it. There you go. You got Hogan's Spring Fling Caddis. Great pattern for any early spring caddis hatches. Great, I mean, gosh, it'd, it'd fish for a lot of different things. I And let's be real, I'm fishing it in the middle of caddis and betas hatches a lot of the time, and, you know, they may eat it for a betas merger as well. But it has definitely put some fish in my boat over the years during those early February caddis hatches. Mm -hmm.